What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Last time, we concluded the Boo Saga, and started our way into the events of Super, well, at least for this timeline. Even though Barok's possession caused Boo to be revived, it was okay in the end. With some help from Elder Kai, and a group effort from Gohan, Trunks, and Bardock, Majin Buu was eventually defeated. Although, Bardock did seek something concerning. With his foresight, he had a vision, one of Beerus and Whis, and one of two potential villains. We'll be seeing more of that in this part. For this video, let's set a like goal of 3,500 likes. Once we hit that, I'll continue with another part of this series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. So obviously in the last part, I was teasing Zamasu and Goku Black. And yes, it is Goku Black, and not anyone else. And due to the changes in the past, I will have to briefly cover that timeline. We've obviously been focused on Bardock's timeline, but before we go into this next arc, we need to have some context. But since that timeline isn't the main focus here, we're going to kind of rush through this. So clearly there were some big changes back then. Obviously, there was the fact that Bardock and future Gohan were there. They weren't there originally. But the biggest change of all is the fact that Goku's alive. Not only that, but he got Super Saiyan 2 pretty early on. This will have some huge consequences later on. And not in a bad way either. Goku being alive is actually pretty good for everyone. Which should be pretty obvious. After Bardock, Trunks, and Gohan left, the present timeline was peaceful again. And this peace actually lasted a while. With Gohan and Goku now having Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta's feeling kind of left out. He needs to work towards that next, and that's exactly what he starts doing. Thankfully, he has two people to train with, mainly with Goku, though. Their rivalry continues since Goku is still alive, and the two of them spend a lot of time training together. Vegeta slowly starts warming up to everyone. He might have been cold beforehand, but the events of the Cell Saga and everything after have changed him, and slowly but surely, he's becoming a pretty alright guy. Through this time period, Goku's also considering something. He actually did consider reviving the others. You know, Bardock and Rats in this timeline, maybe they could actually come back to life. And I know a lot of you would probably want to see this too, but realistically, it probably wouldn't happen. First of all, the Bardock in this timeline is completely different. Goku never actually met him. He met another Bardock from another timeline with very different experiences. Plus, this Bardock has been dead so long that it would be kind of awkward to just revive him now. Same goes for Raditz. It might not actually be the best idea, and it might seem disingenuous. Like, why not revive them beforehand then? And that wouldn't be his main focus anyways. As usual, Goku's just going to want to get stronger. With him around, his influence is actually going to help Vegeta and Gohan get stronger too, since he's there training with them and encouraging Gohan. For one, Vegeta has a great training partner now. He's not going to be falling behind at all. He's obviously trying to catch up to Goku right now and surpass him. And besides just increasing Vegeta's strength, this is going to have effects later on in the Buu Saga. The Buu Saga actually starts pretty normally. There's no real major changes. Even with Goku alive, it's not like that changed anything since he was there anyways. Around this point, Gohan would probably still be the strongest since he actually did keep up with his training. Even though he's been slacking off a bit, his natural hyper potential helps him keep up, and the fact that he had Super Saiyan 2 before anyone else actually really does help a lot. But it's not like he's too far ahead of everyone. Goku and Vegeta are very close behind. And realistically, all three of these people would be stronger than they were in the original story. Thankfully, they're not going to have to put that strength to use. The tournament goes just like normal, as does the meeting with Shin and Kibito. They track down Bobbity's ship, and everything goes pretty much normal up until the point when Majin Vegeta is supposed to appear. In this story, there's not going to be a Majin Vegeta. Think about it. Goku's been alive this whole time, and his rivalry has flourished with Goku. Over those seven years, there has to have been at least one time, one opportunity where they're able to fight all out, and that's just the bare bare minimum. There's probably been other occasions too. Vegeta would be satisfied. He's strong and he's getting stronger, and he's able to fight Kakarot all he wants. He has no desire to go back to his old Saiyan ways either. Plus, with Gohan being stronger, he's not actually going to have a problem with Deboer here. Gohan's able to eliminate him, and Majin Vegeta never appears, meaning Bobbidi's not going to get the energy he needs. He's eventually killed off, and Buu's revival is completely prevented. Obviously, there's other changes here too. There's no Ultimate Gohan, no Elder Kai, no Super Saiyan 3, and nobody knows about fusion, either type of it actually. And even though there's some pretty big differences here, everything starts stabilizing once we head into Super. In Battle of Gods, the only real big change is the fact that Buu's not there, which means the encounter with Beerus is a lot more peaceful since there's no Pudding incident. Beerus isn't going to be as demanding, but the Super Saiyan God is still going to be created, and he and Goku are still going to have their fight. Not like this is really going to affect much. Vegeta and Goku still end up training with Beerus, and on Earth, Frieza does eventually return. And here's the last big difference. When Frieza arrives on Earth, he's going to be encountering a much stronger Gohan. With Gohan training as much as he did, he's actually able to hold off Frieza. First form Frieza is not a problem, and even though it gets a bit more challenging, fighting final form Frieza still isn't too bad for him. But Frieza keeps on pushing Gohan, eventually letting his rage show. This rage gives Gohan a nice boost in power, but it's only temporary and he still doesn't kill Frieza, although he does injure him pretty well. This forces Frieza to turn golden, but by that point, Goku and Vegeta are already back on the planet. Frieza's already desperate as is. He's injured and already in golden. He'd probably try to blow up Earth right away, 
but since everyone's so on guard right now, that's prevented. This means Goku and Vegeta miss out on an opportunity to fight him, which is kind of a bummer. But they also save Earth from getting destroyed, not like it would have mattered anyways. Following this, we'd have the Universe 6 tournament, which would go pretty much the same as normal. By this point, everything pretty much balances out. And because of that, I don't need to explain why Goku Black is here. Since all those events went so similarly, that's the explanation for why Zamasu stole Goku's body. But obviously, there's going to be some big changes once he actually shows up in this timeline. Bardock's already warned Gohan of Trunks. He saw this vision and he doesn't really know what it means. He's unsure of who's going to pop up first. He eventually consults Shin and Kibito. Shin says that one of his visions was of Beerus and Whis. Beerus is still asleep right now. He's taken another temporary nap. So maybe Bardock foresaw his awakening. He might be up sometime soon, but they're not exactly sure when. Bardock also tells Shin about the other vision he had, and Shin has no idea what he saw. Bardock tries to bring it back, just so he can describe exactly what he saw. He sees a brief flash of it, and he's terrified. He gives Shin a confused look, and Shin wonders what he saw. Bardock's speeches for a bit, and then he says he saw a Supreme Kai. What, he saw a Supreme Kai doing all this stuff? Shin says that doesn't make sense, but Bardock says it definitely was him. But alongside him, there was someone else. He didn't get a really good glimpse of this guy, but he could clearly see an outline of him. That hair shape. The person with that Kai was himself. At least, Bardock assumes it was himself. Shin's confused. How could that be? Bardock and another Supreme Kai teaming up? Who is this Kai that he saw anyways? Bardock says he was some green guy wearing purple. Zamasu? Well, that guy's always been a bit weird, but he wouldn't do anything like that, would he? But as for the other guy, he said he saw himself. Bardock wasn't too sure. It was someone that looked like him, at least in terms of the silhouette. He had that hairstyle that he has. He doesn't know anyone else with that hair. It's just him and Kakarot that has that hair. Kakarot's dead here too. Maybe that Majin curse reactivated. Maybe he turns evil again somehow. Shin's not too sure, but he and Kibito check Bardock again to make sure. There's no remnants of any curse, and that wouldn't make any sense anyways. Bobby's gone anyway, so who would be controlling him? Bardock breathed a sigh of relief, but still, this doesn't make sense. His visions haven't been wrong yet, and if anything, they've gotten more potent recently. After Elder Kai awakened his potential, he's been seeing more clear visions, and his visions are able to see farther ahead than usual. There's no way that this can actually be wrong. Well, maybe they can confirm this. If he saw Zamasu there, maybe whatever this is can be prevented. They can go and see Zamasu and see what's up. So, they take a brief trip to Universe 10. Shin, Kibito, and Bardock end up on Gowasu's plan. This is insane for Bardock. Shin and Kibito did mention a multiverse, but seeing it in person is insane. And this is one of 12. It's not like Universe 10 is the only other one, but this planet is eerily quiet. And then they send something. Shin senses Gowasu's key, as well as Zamasu's. They head over to where they sense it, but as they're heading over there, another key pops up, and Gowasu's then disappears. They then speed up, flying over. On the ground, they see Gowasu dead, but they also see Zamasu there hugging someone. The figure then turns around, noticing that he has a shocked look on his face, and he makes eye contact with Bardock. Wait a second, Bardock was wrong. This guy, it definitely isn't him, but it is Kakarot. Goku Black and Zamasu then teleport away, and Shin asks who that was. Bardock says something's wrong. That wasn't who he thought it was, it wouldn't make sense for that to be Kakarot, but it clearly was him. It didn't look like Bardock, he didn't have the scar on his face, and he did have the facial features of Kakarot. But that still doesn't make sense, Kakarot's dead in this timeline, and the one that he met is good anyways, why would he be doing this? But Shin notes something important, that man that Zamasu hugged. It was a Patara, and the energy they felt from him, it was that of a Supreme Kai. At least, it was similar to it, it was something ominous. And Bardock tries to remember it. Yeah, they're right, it actually kinda was like Shin's and similar to Zamasu's as well. It seems they were too late to stop Zamasu teaming up with this guy, but that doesn't mean they can't stop everything yet. Why did they leave so quickly? What were they in such a hurry for? Meanwhile, Goku Black and Zamasu are in Universe 7 right now. They're surprised that they were caught so early, and Goku Black asks who that was. Zamasu doesn't know either. He thought that was Goku, but Goku Black says that definitely was not Goku. It looked like him, but it wasn't. And why was he in Universe 10? How did he get there? Obviously, he had something to do with those Kais, but that doesn't make sense. From what he knows, in this timeline, Earth encountered a disaster a while ago, and around that same time, Goku died here. Maybe that was one of the time travelers. He knows that there are mortals meddling with time here, and that could explain it. But what they need to do first is get the Super Dragon Balls and make Zamasu immortal. Once they do that, the Zero Mortals plan can commence. On Earth, Gohan and Trunks are confused as to what's happening. Bardock disappeared randomly and hasn't come back. He said he was going to see Shin and Kibito, but it shouldn't have taken that long. They hope everything's fine. They then sense this odd energy moving around in space. It's very far away, but it's strong and ominous, as well as a little bit familiar. It feels almost like Goku in a way. That can't be right. Maybe they're just imagining things. But what if this is that thing that Bardock was telling them about? That vision he had before. Maybe it's happening. 
So just in case, they're gonna prepare on Earth. They don't know if these guys even will come here yet, but it seems that Barok's in the process of stopping it. Maybe that's what's taking so long. Hopefully he's okay. They find it weird that they can't sense him yet. Zamasu and Goku Black go around gathering the Dragon Balls. And at one point, they stop on a nearby planet. The life there isn't necessarily intelligent, they decide to extinguish it anyway. The two of them get together, holding a hand. They each charge a beam in their hands, launching it right at the planet. The creatures on the surface below watch as this energy comes towards them. And suddenly, it completely dissipates. Goku Black and Zamasu were just about to leave, but they then sense another energy. Their attack is completely disintegrated. And standing there, they see Shin, Kibito, and Bardock. Shin and Kibito teleport away. Bardock says they should get to safety. Goku Black laughs. Does he really think he's going to be able to accomplish anything alone? Well, actually, yes. They've already theorized what's been going on here. It doesn't make sense for that to actually be Goku. He must be under the influence of Zamasu somehow. And then they were wondering, why exactly would they head to Universe 7? Maybe because of the Dragon Balls there. Of course, Bardock didn't know about the Super Dragon Balls before, and he just theorized it had something to do with Earth or Namek. And in a really weird instance of his foresight, he actually foresaw Goku Black making a grandiose speech about how he stole Goku's body. It's weird, he never had a vision in the form of exposition before, but there's a first time for everything. So yeah, now he's figured everything out, and he knows exactly what he needs to do. He disappears from Goku Black's sight, and then suddenly appears behind Zamasu. He's in his ultimate form, and with one single attack, Zamasu is killed. Goku Black looks on in horror. They were planning to make Zamasu immortal, so he must have been pretty weak, making him a prime target. And now, Goku Black is next. Bardock begins fighting him, and at first, it seems like he has the upper hand, but that changes very quickly. Goku Black tells him he's forgetting something. He might think that this is Goku, but he doesn't know about what's been going on in that timeline. He doesn't know how strong Goku's actually gotten. Goku Black senses no god key within Bardock. Clearly, he hasn't had the same experiences as Goku yet. Goku Black gets the upper hand. Bardock is completely surprised. He's just in his base form. How is this possible? Kakarot couldn't have gotten this strong back in the past, could he? And Goku Black's laughing. This isn't even the beginning of it. He hasn't fully accessed Goku's strength yet. So this is only a portion of his potential. And he says it doesn't matter. Even without Zamasu, he'll be able to accomplish his plan. Now that he knows who his strongest target is, all he needs to do is kill Bardock, and then he can go kill the other mortals that were messing with time. But at first, he has a better idea. He points a hand at Bardock, then turns it at the planet. This time he launches a quicker blast. It pierces right through the planet's core, and it begins detonating. Goku Black places his fingers on his forehead, grinning as he teleports away. The planet begins exploding, and there's nothing Bardock can do. Thankfully, Shin and Kibito were watching, and they show up to get him off there, as well as fixing up the planet so it doesn't explode. They couldn't be anywhere near Goku Black. If Shin died, Beerus would have died too, and they can't let that happen. There's definitely no way Shin could have fought him. If Bardock couldn't, well, it was a good thing that Shin went away. But what's going on now? Goku Black is going around Universe 6 and 7. He's gathering up the rest of the Dragon Balls, and he's not wasting any time. They try and chase him down, but he's simply too fast and it's a dangerous idea. And once he's in Universe 6, it's even harder to get a hold of him. He's eventually able to get the Super Dragon Balls for himself, wishing for immortality. He should have just done this in the first place. He didn't need a partner, he just needed to make himself immortal. He has the power of a Saiyan's body, specifically Goku. And he has immortality. He could exploit the two of them working together to become incredibly strong. Now, there's no way that anyone can stop him. No mortals, and no gods of destruction. And first, he thinks he's gonna target Earth in Universe 7. He wants to see that Saiyan again, as well as the other time travelers. He would love to save the best for last, but he could tell these mortals would be a problem if he lets them live for too long. He teleports into Universe 7, showing up on Earth. Gohan and Trunks fly over once they sense his energy, amazed at what they see. Goku? Shin then teleports in with Bardock, quickly teleporting himself away. Bardock quickly yells at them and says that this isn't Kakarot. They need to fight him and stop him now. No matter what he looks like, they can't trust his appearance. They start fighting him all together, but none of their attacks are doing anything. It's like he's regenerating from them or something. Goku Black chuckles. Bardock was relying on that foresight that he has, wasn't he? What a shame. Yeah, he could see things in the future, but he was way too focused on that and not what was happening in the present. Goku Black reveals that he was able to get the Super Dragon Balls for himself, making himself immortal. No need for Zamasu or anything. Sure, Bardock killing Zamasu was a little bit of a hiccup in his plan, and it did serve to piss off Goku Black but he thinks this might be better anyways. Goku Black continues monologuing, and his laughter is suddenly cut short. There's a bright flash of purple light behind him, and Goku Black screams in pain. Part of him is erased, well, at least temporarily. It eventually comes back, and he's confused. That technique, it was a god of destruction. Barok, Trunks, and Gohan are confused too, but then they hear a voice as someone steps forward. Wait a second, that's the guy that Barok saw in his vision before, that purple cat guy, Beerus. Beerus is yawning, still a bit groggy, this was the thing that interrupted his nap? A time-traveling Kai trying to take over the universe? And what a shame, he's immortal too so he can't just be a Kai. 
Goku Black's nervous, but he laughs. Yeah, that's right, he can't be destroyed by him. Beerus says that's too bad. He was hoping to have some fun and use that technique again. Oh well. The Saiyans are confused. He's so casual about this. Does he not care or something? Beerus simply walks up to Goku Black. He yawns and turns to those Saiyans. They know Elder Kai, right? Remember how he was sealed in a sword before? Well, that was his doing. And without even looking, he seals Goku Black away. He just tells them not to break this. Normally he wouldn't be helping them, but he's interested. He had some sort of dream about a Super Saiyan God. Plus, whatever this guy was doing disturbed his nap. But he's awake now and he's probably not going to go back to sleep for a while. And after everything Shin told him, he might as well stay awake for some of this. And with that, we'll leave off here for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? And what do you think will happen next time? Leave any thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon so you're notified about any future parts of this what if, or any of the videos that I upload on my channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.